I want to talk about um, relay boards and Arduino. So I've got my Arduino here, it's an Arduino Mega. I'm using a Mega because it's got uh, four separate serial communications channels. I'm using three just now, I will be using the four when I put the Wi-Fi in. Uh, means I'm not having to use software serial to create extra ports, it's less code. Um, but anyway, the, the, the point of the video here is relay boards. So I've got an eight channel board here. Mostly uh, mostly switching lights, but uh, I've got a couple of uh, larger current things like uh, an infrared film floor heater. Um, the point of a relay board, obviously, is to allow you to use a small voltage and current to switch a larger one. Uh, that said, when you've got uh, Arduino or Raspberry Pi, whatever, it's got a lot of things going on and a lot of things being powered. Um, even if you power that, uh, your, your relay board separately, which uh, the sort of standard ones triggered by individual pins you can do, it's still, it's still taking uh, current from the board. And don't forget, every time you switch a pin, you're gonna get uh, varying currents flying around that board. Um, it will affect uh, levels probably on other pins, is what my thinking is. So what I've used here is an I2C relay board. It uses the I2C communications bus, um, which is uh, this um, the purple and grey wires here coming off this uh, uh, shield, this mega shield. Um, the grey is the clock, the um, purple is the data, and it just goes onto the board here. And I've got four wires. Uh, I've got two, obviously, for the uh, I2C serial data, serial clock, and then I've got my power, which is coming from a separate uh, a separate power module. Um, but so this, this, this is really good because over twisted pair, I could have this anywhere in the van, um, really, because, uh, you know, you can, uh, I, I2C is, you know, the, uh, the the length of the cables is not very, not very much, but I have tested this, the twisted pair, Cat5 data cabling, um, and I, uh, yeah, I was, I was getting a signal five meters away, no problem at all. So each one of these relays is addressed through the Arduino code uh, with the hexadecimal address. The board has a hex address. Sorry, these have a binary address. Each of these. Um, this is uh, this is a great board from eBay, and they do. This is an eight channel. They do six, twelve, sixteens, twenty fours. Um, but the good thing is, is you can set the board address with these dip switches here and uh, the uh, I'll link in the description the company that makes it they've got a YouTube video and where I got it and you can uh, just add extra boards on the I2C bus so without using additional pins in the Arduino so these these two wires here would come into here and come out uh, to the next board and they're uh, the, the, the company that makes it the video they have four different boards, all switching relays, and there's example code when you get the uh, when you get the board. Um, they give you a link, and there's an example sketch. Dead easy to use, honestly. I don't know why anyone wouldn't use one of these boards. They cost a little bit more, uh, but um, no, they, they are fantastic. You can connect to them with the screw terminals or with the uh, Dupont pins as well, and you've got in and out, so you can daisy chain boards too. Um, these are just connected to these. Because this is an, uh, a vehicle application, I wanted to use the screw terminals. But uh, if I wanted to take another board out, I would probably buy a, a some sort of connector, which would clip onto there, I don't really know, to uh, add my next board on, and I can, with the risers, obviously just stack it on top, whatever. But uh, that, that's a really, really good way of doing things. Uh, an I2C relay board. It's uh, it's going to save the amount of pins. If you're not using a Mega, you're using an Uno or a Nano or something small like that. That means you can uh, you can you can retain your pins for doing lots of other things. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been 100% reliable, really stable because I've given it stable power. Um, a quick rundown on the power I've got here. Uh, this is. Um, this is my five volts for powering all the modules. I've actually set it to 5.2 because there's going to be voltage drop across some of them, um, which goes to this. This is just a distribution board I've soldered up. So this side, all these terminals are five volts. This is all ground. Everything 
goes through the ground, it's all tied together. The Arduino, each of the power modules come into here. The relay board comes into here, all the individual sensors come into here. The second module, these are just LM256s. Um, they're not brilliant, but do the job. Um, there's a 3.3 volt one, which supplies this rail here. This is from a DH22 sensors. They can run on five. They run better on three because they heat up uh, with five and throws your uh, readings out. Uh, this board here, uh, I've set to seven volts, and this purely supplies the Arduino. It, uh, I, I could have given the Arduino five volts. I wanted to keep it separate from the modules because I don't want any sort of voltage drop and fluctuating currents. I want it to be as stable as possible. I've given it seven. The internal regulator in the Arduino will drop it down to five. That's the only thing this board powers. And then I've got another board here. This is set to five volts. This is for the analog reference, not wired it in yet. But um, because my readings have been uh, on my analog pins uh, for the various things like voltage dividers and resistance readings, that's been really stable. But if I find that it's uh, not going to be, uh, if, they, if they start wandering quite a bit, I'll use this uh, five volt reference. And I've used this type of um, regulator uh, because it gives a cleaner output. It's less efficient, um, but because uh, it's, it's, it's just a simple uh, BJT, um, it uh, converts a lot of uh, the heat into, sorry, a lot of the, the, the current into heat. I think it's only 70% efficient, so you're losing 30% in heat. But it gives us a cleaner output, more stable output than these uh, LM2596s. If you notice as well, is I've used these ones here which have this uh, type of inductor rather than the uh, little blue board ones that you get with a little square inductor which look a lot more modern but uh, from looking at these on the oscilloscope uh, I found the uh, the ones with these type of coils on them uh, they give uh, a, a much a much cleaner output um, less less ripple when I uh, put the oscilloscope on here so that's why I've used these particular ones. Hope this has been of help.